welcome to another installment of Metalhead Central, the show where I take an honest look at the harder side of music and give it an honest rating. Today, we're going to be examining two albums by two bands who are as different as Night and Day, or Slayer and Sarah McLaughlin, or the Red Sox and the Yankees. Insert random comparison here. Yeah, it's Dark Throne, the godfathers of blackest of the black metal, and Gloryhammer, the godfathers of... Angus McFife, I guess, I don't know. First, we're gonna dive into some black metal rawness? With Dark Throne? I say that as a question because I'm not really sure what genre to put this album in. The album's called Old Star, and it was released May 31st on Peaceful Records. Now don't get me wrong, I love Dark Throne. Dark Throne's one of my favorite metal bands of all time, and definitely my favorite black metal band. I'm a big fan of Transylvanian Hunger and a lot of their earlier work when they transitioned from a thunderous death metal outfit to one of the coldest black metal bands of all time. So many classic albums have come from this group. A Blaze in the Northern Sky, Under a Funeral Moon, their first death metal put out uh, Soulside Journey, the aforementioned Hunger. So I have to ask the following question in light of all that. What happened? For a band formerly known for their lo-fi, purposely horrible production values, and tremolo riffage, this album, it really shifts stylistically, and not only this album, but a lot of their recent work as well. At times, I felt like I was listening to Dark Throne meets Sludge Metal. It sounded more like something you'd hear from Down or Crowbar or one of the other vaunted New Orleans sludge groups. Now, that doesn't make it bad. It just makes it different. But are the differences warranted? First, the good stuff. This album has a lot of catchy riffage on it, which you know I love, and that works well with Nocturno Culto's vocals. The lyricism isn't terribly written, and it does its job well within the musical framework of the songs. Album opener, I Muffle Your Inner Choir, is a throwback to the Dark Throne of 1994, and it works really well. In a year in which we have had very impressive album openers, this song is no exception. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, there are really redeeming riffs all over this album. I also find the production values on it really, really nice. I like that the band are wanting to sound more modern with this aspect. Production on here is much cleaner than something you would have heard back in the early 90s if you were listening to this band. The problem here is that, as with a lot of the band's recent work, it falls prey into wanting to be something that it's not. Dark Throne are one of those bands that I feel can transition between black and death metal very well. One thing they aren't is a sludge metal outfit, and the sheer slowness of the album works against it at some points. It's only 38 minutes long, but you feel those 38 minutes. It's like it grabs you and chokes you. It works more as a doom metal album. I found that whenever they slowed a song down, it created this hole in the music that was very, very difficult for the band to crawl back out of. It's nice when the band does return to being nothing more than the masters of the tremolo style, and there's a lot of tremolo on this album, don't get me wrong, but those moments are few and far between. However, there was a lot of catchiness here, the riffs were solid, and the production was outstanding. I really enjoyed that aspect of the album. That saved the record from being doomed to mediocrity, at least in my eyes. In light of that, I'm giving Old Star by Dark Throne an 86 out of 100 on the YPS scale. Now we move on to one of the goofiest, yet most interesting and entertaining metal bands in the world. It's time for the next chapter in Angus McFife's saga, with Glory Hammer's new effort, Legends from Beyond the Terror Vortex. It was released May 31st on Napalm Records. Ah yes, the band formed as a side project of the keyboardist from Ailstorm, also one of the goofiest metal bands of all time. So let's see if they brought the thunder on their third release. First off, this is one of the most enjoyable metal albums I've ever heard. I'm just going to get that right out of the way. It was a fantastic album. I was very impressed with the band's ability to balance the melodic and heavy aspects of their music across their first two releases, but this one might be their best album ever. Yes, it's a power metal album about a mythos featuring Scottish people in space, I guess, but the point is that in the hands of any other band, it could be a disastrous mess. But Glory Hammer are a band that knows what good music is, and they really exude it on this album. 
I just love how the band just sweeps into their courses. They leave nothing to the imagination. It's just, here it is, take it, we put it out there. It explodes with all the power and beauty you would expect from a band like this, and it works magnificently. Thomas Winkler's vocals are as crisp and clean as they've ever been, and the man who once auditioned for Dragon Force sounds like he should be on the pantheon of power metal vocalists with this effort. He throws himself into the song, and you really feel like you're listening to Angus McFife, the character he plays during the band's live stage shows. But aside from just how fun this album is musically, lyrically, it's even more fun. Will death and black metal fans consider this incredibly corny? Yes. Absolutely. Heck, I even consider it corny at some points. But no other band can talk about zombified unicorns and eagles and hootsmen and, and the ancient space kingdom of Dundee and whatever and make it sound so unbelievably sincere. These guys absolutely nail every aspect of everything about the story and it is a delight to listen to. On the downside, because yes, this album has a downside, Sometimes it does feel as though you're listening to the same song over and over again. The riffs can get a little repetitive, and the drum work, well, a lot of it anyway, seems to be dollar store power metal stuff. It's stuff that you've heard before, the quick drums, the, the fast stuff on the double bass. It's, it's stuff you've heard before. So if you're looking for something new with the drum work department, it's not going to be on this album. I'm also not a fan of the band ending the album with a ridiculously long song after the others have been relatively short. I mean, this album ends with a 12-minute track. The longest song up to that point had been just over five minutes. It makes the album feel staggered and rather unevenly paced. But those are incredibly tiny criticisms on an album that was a joy to listen to. From verse to chorus, Gloryhammer crafted a power metal masterpiece with this one. With catchy riffs, amazing production values, a glorious, if but corny, atmosphere, and having the guts to name a character on a metal concept album, The Hootsman. I am delighted to give the latest Glory Hammer effort a 98 out of 100 on the YPS scale. Thank you so much for watching. Click like, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for more Metalhead Central. By the way, for those of you wondering, I am in the middle of writing the next uh, Metal Artist Review Show episode. Listening to Deconstruction by Devin Townsend Project, it's not an easy listen. So... I'm in the middle of that. It will be coming out at some point this week, I promise you. I'm trying to get the channel up over 20 subs. All help towards that goal will be greatly appreciated, so if you enjoyed this, smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It's the first week of June next week, folks. We are flying through 2019. We got a couple of well-known bands dropping albums. Motionless and White and Upon a Burning Body are both putting new albums out next week, and I'm going to be reviewing none of them. Why? Because there's another band, Pelican, that I feel warrants my attention. They're dropping their new album, Nighttime Stories, and I can't wait to hear it. It's post-metal, so hopefully it'll have the same atmospheric qualities I've come to expect from the genre without compromising a lot of the heaviness that the genre is known for as well. I hope you'll join me. You've been watching Metalhead Central, where I give honest ratings to honest music. I'll see y'all next time.